This is Greg Troutwine with Marine Technology TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Jason Heyman, the CEO of Sustainable Marine Energy, an organization that is making waves in the area of tidal energy. Jason, first and foremost, thanks for joining us. No, thank you, Greg. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So Jason, to start, uh, when I was looking into the company, I, was, uh, I read that you have a very extensive background in the marine industry. How and when did you know that yours would be a career in the offshore renewable energy field? Yeah, sure. That's a, a great question, Greg. And um, yeah, I suppose my, my interest got peaked in back in about 2003. Um, I went to a lecture at the uh, University of Newcastle um, and it was, they had uh, a wave energy uh, crowd there and a tidal energy developer. And uh, back at the time that was WaveGen who had deployed a, uh, um, a uh, I suppose, a Wells Air Turbine um, in a sort of concrete bunker, if you like, uh, on the wild Atlantic coast of, of Isla and another crowd called the engineering business who deployed this Stingray thing. And um, it's pretty cool tech. And uh, I was at the time actually working on a, on a FPSO um, top size installation in a, in a shipyard there in Newcastle. And um, so, I was, so I was working for the dark side, if you like. And uh, I, uh, you know, had my eyes open a little bit and I thought, wow, you know, you, you look at the, the technology and the innovation that's gone into uh, figuring out how we can extract hydrocarbons in the marine environment for the last 30 years. And uh, I think I just had a moment there where I thought, this is where the next 30 years is going to be, which is figuring out how to do that renewably. We understand that your company has developed a platform for floating tidal energy. Can you give us a brief on the technology and specifically, how does it work and is it scalable? Sure. Okay. So, yeah, so um, our technology is basically, uh, well, it's basically a trimaran, uh, which if you like, it's uh, on a big swinging mooring and it's got uh, some outboards off the back. Apart from those outboards aren't propelling it forward. Um, they're instead basically hydro generators, which are capturing the, uh, the energy in the flow going past the platform. Um, so it's, uh, of course, uh, the loads are fairly big because, and, and the thing's pretty beamy because, uh, of course, those turbines are, are, are fairly large. So depending on the, the resource, we can scale them. So we, we've set it on a drivetrain, which is about 70 kilowatts, but we can scale the rotor diameter of the turbines depending on the site characteristics so whether it's a moderate resource like six seven knots or a sort of fierce site like force which is more like 10 knots and so and then we can vary the number of turbines that we put on the platform so we can do two four or six at the moment um, so that means we can get anywhere from 70 kilowatts to 420 kilowatts out of one platform and um and yeah so uh so i suppose in the course of time I'm sure we'll be able to scale them bigger, um, but at the moment that gives us plenty of room to play with. And um, yeah, uh, I suppose if you want more power, we just put more platforms in. So what do you consider to be the key technical points of your system? Uh, I guess to be blunt, how is your system engineered to succeed where other tidal uh, systems have failed? Sure, sure. So I think, you know, one of the, one of the challenges is, I suppose when I, when I got involved in this, as they're saying, in, in the early noughties, um, I'd go to conferences about marine energy and there weren't very many naval architects or marine engineers around. So there were some people with some fantastic ideas, um, but they hadn't really thought about the practicalities of what it takes to install in the marine environment and what it takes to access and service things in the marine environment. Um, in fact, the first project I was involved in with, a, with Boyd Hydro out in Korea, installing a first generation gravity mounted turbine. It was a fantastic opportunity and, and a fantastic project, um, but you know, the, the, the heavy lift gear and everything that was needed to put this on the seabed um, was huge and very expensive. And, um, and of course, if you just had something go wrong, one little component on the auxiliary system, like, I don't know, a, 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 a hydraulic oil cooler, for example, um, you know, you'd have to lift this whole system up with hundreds of tons to be able to do it. And that's what drove us towards thinking about a floating system. And in developing a floating system, the real challenge is dealing with through the mooring system, the, the huge loads. So, I mean, to give you an idea, like two of our turbines produce the same thrust as an F-35 fighter jet on full afterburner, right? So you take our new six turbine platform, that's like taking three F-35s, telling the pilots hit full noise and putting that on a leash. And so, uh, so, we, had to, so we had to really think about it literally from the bottom up. And, and so we've had to develop everything from a really innovative uh, rock anchoring system where we lower 
uh, a remotely operated tool onto the seabed and we drill a, a rock anchor, install a rock anchor in one hit. Um, and that's, um, you know, and we've got to do that within an hour, deck to deck, because we've got to do it slack tide. So that's very challenging. Then we've got to think about the mooring side of it, which, uh, you know, it's not just simple chain all one size all the way up, because we've got to think about how the different parts of the mooring system work, because we've also got to deal with rises and falls of the tide of up to 15 meters mm -hmm. of force. And then, and then we've got um, a mooring turret, which, which uh, it's, it's on, on the platform itself, which is what we connect the moorings into. Um, and that's got to allow the uh, power export cable to come up through the center of it, through the geostationary portion, if you like. And, um, and then it's got to, yeah, react all that, react all that thrust um, that's coming through the structure. So, um, so it's, I suppose it's thinking about, you know, all those elements, that whole load path, putting the pieces together and making it all work happily together. And, you know, so it just sits there passively aligning with the flow, thinking it's pretty happy. Well, it sounds like there's a lot going on there for sure. <laughs> That's for certain. So Jason, we understand that the system has been put to the test in the field. Can you give us some specifics on that? And also, can you discuss uh, the activities that you have planned for this year in the Bay of Fundy? Sure. So, uh, yeah, so we first installed the platform in uh, Connell on the west coast of Scotland. Uh, in, and that was its first test deployment. And that was over the winter of 2017 through to the summer 2018. Um, and then we pulled it out and uh, took it over to Canada to Grand Passage in the uh, mouth of the Bay of Fundy. Um, and that's where we've been, I suppose, testing it since we installed it there in September 2018. And, uh, and with some some brief in and outs for, for different bits as we've been trying things and breaking things and fixing things and everything else over the past couple of years. Um, but we've had a pretty steady run now for a bit over a year there. And then we have our next generation platform. So that was the original sort of prototype or trial horse, if you like. And uh, the next generation platform, which is gonna be going into our first commercial project at Force, is literally uh, sitting on the slipway at AF Terrier there on, in the Tagen. So on the, on the, on the French shore and in Nova Scotia. And uh, we're hoping to get her launched here if we get everything done in the right weather window in the next couple of weeks. And then we'll be doing some workup trials and sea trials, if you like, in, in Grand Passage here for um, over through until the spring. And then in the summer, we'll be going up and commencing the installation of all of our balance of plants. So that's all the cabling and anchors and moorings and everything. Um, and then once, and that's where that first platform will go to be, followed hopefully by two more by the end of the year. So it's, uh, we've got a, a lot ahead of us this year, a lot to get done. Jason, I understand also that you've uh, made some key uh, technical partnerships, notably with uh, Chatel Hydro. Can you discuss the nature of the relationship and insights on what both parties bring to the system? Sure. So um, as I'm sure many people, as many of your, your viewers are aware, Shuttle has been in the marine, uh, marine sector for, for a long, long time with its propulsion units. And um, I suppose back in uh, oh, probably about 10 years ago now, um, they started an initiative to start to see if they could take what they've learned, of course, from propulsion units and, um, and turn that into, uh, into a tidal turbine. Um, and they've done some work for other tidal turbine technology uh, developers, you know, supplying drivetrain components and subsystems. Um, and in the meantime, been developing this small uh, drivetrain themselves. And so, so we, we are partnering with them for a while using their uh, drivetrain and, and uh, in our early prototypes and everything. And then uh, we reached a point where we said, okay, well, you guys have got part of the system. They've got part of the solution. And ultimately all people want is one package and the end customer is interested in buying a system that works um, and uh, and so so we teamed up with them um, they've actually now become the largest shareholder in our business mm -hmm. and so um, and so we've merged the two business units together um, under the sustainable green energy banner and uh, so now sustainable green energy offers the complete tidal energy uh, package how is your company investing this year and specifically what can our viewers expect to see from you uh, in the coming 12 to 24 months uh, yes, yeah, so I suppose the, the main investment that we're making this year is in all of the, uh, well, first of all, the team and the infrastructure uh, required to deliver our first nine megawatt commercial project at Force, which we're going to be delivering here in phases over the next three to four years. So this is about ramping it up. This is about moving from R&D and prototyping into commercial delivery mode. And that, of course, requires some pretty substantial investments in uh, equipment, 
Um, you know, we just bought a couple of small support vessels. Um, it also, uh, you know, we're, we're developing a new a new rig for, for our anchoring at Force because it's a pretty brutal environment. So, um, and uh, yeah, we're ramping up the team. So um, there's a lot going on right now in terms of, of just ramping the whole project up. But what do you see as the key hurdles to bring tidal power to utility scale? So I suppose the key hurdles, I think at first is a, there's a sort of hurdle around, um, if you like, public acceptance of social uh, license um, within, uh, I suppose, especially within the Bay of Fundy. Um, and so we, we know that some of our uh, predecessors um, have had some challenges on that front, and we're very keen in trying to make sure we don't uh, we approach this differently and that we um, engage with the community early, we get them engaged with the project and we make sure that they can they can ensure that the and see that the benefits there. I mean, that area around force um, used to actually be a big shipbuilding area back when, uh, when of course, ships were renewably powered with sail and, uh, and, and where wood was the, was the main building material. But unfortunately, uh, steam and, and, and iron and fossil fuels um, took it away from them. But hopefully we can bring long lasting economic benefit back to that area. And, um, you know, the tidal resource is there. It's not gonna go anywhere. So, so once, um, once, once, once you got devices deployed, it's not like uh, you know what's happening in the North Sea, where the resource is all of a sudden going to one day run out, and then the industry is going to wind down, and then people are going to be looking for jobs. So I think I think you've got to really people got to understand it's a long term play. It's hard yards to get there. Um, it's going to require support, and once you start deploying at scale, costs are going to come down. We've seen that with offshore wind, um, but you've got to get to deployment at scale and, and, and make it meaningful. So unfortunately, we're still in a situation where COVID-19 is an integral part of business discussions. Uh, with that, can you discuss how the pandemic has materially impacted your company to date? What's your outlook for 2021? Yeah, yeah, it's been a tough, it's been a tough, uh, tough year. Um, you know, we, have our team is pretty geographically dispersed, I suppose you call it. So, so we're headquartered in the UK. We've got the turbine uh, design team and power systems team in Germany, co-located with Shuttle. Uh, you know, we've got all the sort of naval architecture and engineering team headquartered in the UK, headquartered in Edinburgh, and we've got um, then the project delivery team in Canada. Um, you know, we were getting pretty used to running back and forth across the across the Atlantic to get things done. Um, and to help each other out. So we've had to sort of learn how to sort of help each other out virtually. So we've had to do all sorts of fun things like, um, you know, trying to figure out how to commission systems remotely with technicians in Germany, speaking with technicians in Canada, wearing, you know, Google glasses and fun stuff like that. Um, but, uh, but I think there, you know, and, and it's, it, it just, things take longer. Um, you know, you just, you, you know, we're a social animals. And when we need to sort something out, whether it's with a regulator or with staff or hiring people or, you know, uh, doing a deal with a supplier, um, it's much easier if you can just get in a room sometimes. And, um, and so, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty challenging. I know, um, you know, it's, in, it's, it's, you know, winter in Scotland right now, being on lockdown as well, isn't, isn't helping morale. So I think, you know, that's, that's the real challenge. This thing is dragging on and, um, and we just got to keep everybody um, buoyant and motivated um but you know uh, without being able to actually touch the tools <laughs> so it's um that's the challenge really you know trying to trying to maintain that level of engagement with the project remotely for such a long period of time okay well again i i do sincerely appreciate your time i wish you the best of luck and i look forward to following up with you as this progresses during the year thanks greg a pleasure of being here and uh, yeah look forward to coming back and showing you guys a bit more when we've, when we've got a bit further down the track